Thanks for being here today, everybody. Appreciate you coming in. This is a special day here for the Pirates. And uh, I want to start out by saying I do understand the importance of baseball at ECU. Um, it is very evident to me that this program means a lot, not only to our university, to this community, and certainly to our chancellor, who's with us today, Steve Ballard. So I'm glad you're with us, Steve. Thank you. Uh, this process was important to me because it was really the first time I had the opportunity uh, to hire a head coach with our program. And, uh, it, and this was important to kind of uh, set the tone for the future, uh, hopefully not too often, however. Therefore, I wanted to quickly establish the profile for our next head coach. In order to do that, I met with several longtime members of the Greenville community, baseball supporters, and others in the Pirate Club. I also met with members of the team who gave their input. I also had the opportunity to sit down and talk with longtime members of our staff who have a great knowledge of our history of baseball tradition here at ECU. And, and uh, finally, I was able to talk to several people nationally and uh, had the opportunity to um, call on acquaintances and friends and colleagues of mine that gave me great input in the process as we move forward. There was a great deal of consistency in what I heard and what we needed for our next head coach. We needed someone who wants to be at ECU and will be here for a long time and make this their home. Someone who has a history of high level competitive success not only on the field, but also in the classroom. Someone with energy and passion who will bring the crowds and enthusiasm back to Clark LeClaire Stadium. And someone who will inspire our team and return ECU baseball to a nationally ranked program while knowing and believing that going to Omaha is our ultimate goal. I said I wanted to do a national search, and that's what we did. There were many high-quality candidates who wanted the job, and a select few who met all the criteria. I wanted to move quickly, but also wanted to respect the programs that were still competing nationally. And obviously, Ole Miss was one of those programs. I had a lot of help from the very start, and I want to thank Chancellor Ballard for the confidence he has shown in me in, our, in, in, my, in this process and in this selection. He understands baseball, and we both understand the significance of this hire. I want to thank my staff for their professionalism and expertise, and especially Nick Floyd, who is the sport administrator for baseball, who was at my right hand throughout this process, and just a tremendous help. So thank you, Nick. I also want to thank our Board of Trustees, their chair, Robert Brinkley. They held a special meeting yesterday to approve the contract. And also want to thank our university attorney, Donna Payne, and her staff, who expedited the agreement in record time. And finally, I want to thank Parker Overton, uh, he and his wife, Becky, who allowed us to use their plane that we call a time machine. Uh, to go out to Omaha and talk to some of our candidates and that uh, was a very, very productive trip for us and certainly whetted my appetite to go back again real soon. No pressure. So now it's time to hear about our new head coach, Cliff Godwin. In my opinion, he fits the profile perfectly for our next head coach. First of all, he's the son of a coach. He's a gritty competitor who played football, basketball, and baseball in high school, and at least according to him, he excelled in all of them. He worked at every level in the coaching profession, from the high school baseball coach at Kinston to a volunteer assistant at Wilmington, and then on to Vanderbilt as the director of baseball operations, and we all know their fate. We all know what they ended up last night as a national championship baseball program. Then he went on to Notre Dame, then to LSU, where he went to the College World Series, UCF, where he was associate head coach, and then most recently on to Ole Miss, where they made their first appearance in the College World Series 
in 42 years. He is known as a relentless recruiter with a stellar reputation for his work ethic and professionalism. He is a highly respected hitting instructor and earned accolades as the top national assistant in the game. He has had great mentors in the collegiate game and has been with two programs that have gone on to the College World Series, so he knows what it takes to get there. He was an excellent player as a catcher here at ECU and helped his squad under the direction of Coach Keith LeClaire to three regional appearances and a super regional appearance. He was also, and I think very proudly from our perspective, a two-time academic All-American as a student athlete here at ECU. He is a local guy who was raised in Snow Hill and is coming home. He understands our values because he's lived our values. He's experienced our values. And I believe he exemplifies the term undaunted. He has the total package on paper, but more importantly, he has the intangible qualities of a leader who can inspire our team by establishing high standards in the classroom in the community and on the field. He will lead our program and help ECU to reach our goals for the baseball program. These goals are easily stated, but not so easily achieved. They will take a great deal of support and hard work to do that. Those goals are, we want to be a top 25 program nationally. We want to win the American Conference Championships lead the American Conference in GPA for baseball, be ranked in the top 20 in attendance, host a regional, host a super regional, go to Omaha and win a national championship. As I said, easily stated, it's going to take a lot of hard work to get it done. I know he has the support of this entire community and this entire university to help get that done. And I'm very pleased to introduce the 16th head coach for our Pirate Baseball program, Mr. Cliff Godman. Thanks, Jeff. Um, wow, it's uh, been a whirlwind, surreal for me, but uh, it's good to be home. You know, uh, over the past 12 years, I've coached all over the country and uh, coached a lot of successful programs, but I wouldn't be where I was or I am standing today if it wasn't for a decision I made uh, back in the spring of 1996. And you know, I had an opportunity to play several different sports in college, at different colleges, and uh, Coach Gary Overton took a chance on me to play baseball here. I really wasn't good enough to have a scholarship offered to me but uh, Coach Rabbit fooled him, kind of forced Coach O to uh, uh, get it done. But it was the single best decision I've ever made in my life. Um, when I came to East Carolina, you know, I was able to play with a group of players that uh, were very special. And the experiences I had were all because of that decision and playing for Coach Keith LeClaire. Um, but when this job opportunity arose itself, obviously I was very interested in a lot of people you know, text, call, hey, Cliff, you're going to get the job, you know, so forth. And they thought it was just because I wanted to come home and to coach at my alma mater, which was a piece to the puzzle, but it wasn't the entire puzzle. You know, when I sat down with Jeff and his staff in Omaha, I told him that the only, re only way I'd take this position is if they were willing to compete at a national level. And from the first second I stepped, uh, sat down with those guys, um, I knew um, that they wanted to compete at a national level. I mean, Greenville, North Carolina is a college baseball town. Um, we know what it can be from the years of 99 to 2001 when we were hosting regionals, um, hosting super regionals and knocking on the door to Omaha. And uh, that's why I accepted the position here and I'm very proud and blessed to be the next head coach here at East Carolina. A um, Couple people I need to thank, first off my family, my dad, Lewis Godwin, my mom, Stuff together here. <laughs> my grandmother, um, my teammates uh, that are here, uh, John Williamson, <clears throat> Kevin O'Sullivan, Corey Scott, uh, there's several more out there, Coach Witt, the Wards, 
Um, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for those guys. The administration, like I said, when I met in Omaha, <clears throat> from day one, I knew they were committed to getting East Carolina back in the na national spotlight. Chancellor Ballard, uh, Jeff Comper, Nick Floyd, uh, J.J. McLam, Jay Batts, the Board of Trustees, they've committed to myself and the entire staff that's going to be associated with East Carolina baseball at the highest level. Jeff's vision uh, to get to Omaha, you know, parallel mine. I know what it takes to get there. I've been there twice as assistant coach. I know how close we were as players, and uh, I know my teammates are looking forward, and coach the players looking forward for us to competing at the door and, uh, you know, knocking it down and getting to Omaha. My former bosses, uh, Mike Bianco, the head coach at Ole Miss, uh, spent three years with him. He, he taught me the Skip Berkman system, you know, where Skip Berkman won all those national championships, and, you know, Coach Bianco showed me that. And he's a great family guy, great person. Terry Rooney, one of my best friends in the entire, you know, business. I worked for him uh, for six years between Notre Dame, LSU, and at the University of Central Florida. And man, what a relentless recruiter that guy is. And when we stepped foot in Florida, um, when we were coaches at the University of Central Florida, I didn't know what I was getting into, but he taught me. And uh, it's been a, a great friend and a great resource. Now we're going to be competitors, and he's very competitive, so it'll be interesting in the American Conference for sure. Um, Paul Maneri, the head coach at LSU, who's won a national championship. We were able to go to Omaha together in 2008. He uh, taught me how to deal with the, the athletic administration, the public, the media, um, and several other areas, but a great resource for me. Tim Corbin, another national championship as of last night. Um, when, I, when I got to him as the director of baseball operations, I had no idea what went on behind the scenes as a, as a college, you know, Division I baseball coach at the highest level, from booster clubs to, uh, you know, practice organization to recruiting, the whole nine yards. He is probably the most complete coach I've ever worked for and uh, very grateful for that. Mark Scaff, the head coach at UNC Wilmington, he uh, gave my first opportunity as a, as a baseball coach, took a chance on me, and uh, what a great person and a great friend. Uh, from that standpoint. Uh, finally, Ole Miss, their, their fans, you know, Ross Bjork, the AD there, um, has been very, very uh, grateful to me over my time there. But Mike Bianco, Carl Lafferty, the players, you know, the ride we had this year to go to Omaha and, the, and Ole Miss not being there in 42 years, you guys don't understand the pressure of that <laughs> as, as a player. And uh, those guys were so tough to go to ULL, which my teammates, we lost to a regional in 2000 when we were the number one seed. You talk about a hostile environment. We need Clark LeClaire Stadium to be like that, and it can because it's a much nicer stadium, and uh, we got a lot of support as well. Um, and the guy that, you know, probably got all this vision going back in the summer of 1997, Keith LeClaire. You know, I've been blessed to wear the number 23 at a couple different places, but wear it in Omaha. And uh, his vision, you know, when he got here, I'm gonna be honest with you, as a player, I didn't know what Omaha was or every, you know, what's the College World Series, had no idea. And he spoke it every single day, but he lived it every single day. Even in 1998, when we were, you know, right around hovering around 500, he never stopped talking about Omaha. And his passion for East Carolina baseball um, was unparalleled. And the way he treated us as players, I wasn't the best player, he treated me the same as he did, uh, you know, Lee Delfino or anybody else that was an All-American on our team. And that's what made him great. And he instilled a blue-collar work ethic in us and a pride in us. And we thought we had outworked everybody in the country. And so I'll be forever grateful to him. And I know he's looking down on us right now. And uh, the future's bright at East Carolina. The vision, the vision of our program is going to be similar to what Coach LeClaire said when, when he got here. And it's going to be one that we're going to recruit the best student athletes in the country. They're going to come here. They're going to work hard. It's going to be a program designed to implement discipline, excellence, blue-collar work ethic, and we're going to do things the right way on and off the field. Um, something I kind of came up with uh, with some help, but it's something I, I want our guys to kind of think about as a lifestyle, but it's an acronym, Pirates. And uh, the P stands for purpose. We want to have a plan and a reason why. When you start coaching, you know, kids in this age, it's much different than when I was coming through and some of my teammates where you could just tell somebody to do something and they just did it. 
But now you've got to explain to them why we're doing it. Why is it going to make them better? Why is it going to make them a better person? And we're going to talk about that every single day. I, integrity. I want guys to do things the right way on and off the field, even when no one's watching. And uh, we're going to develop principles and plans to make sure that happens. They're not going to be perfect. They're not going to be perfect kids. None of us were when we were coming through school here. We want people to do things the right way all the time. R is responsible. Um, you have the power to choose your response. Um, each day we'll be faced with situations, uh, decisions, but you can always choose your response. You know, the uh, things you're faced with won't always be positive, but you can always have a positive response. You're going to get knocked down, you've got to get back up. And uh, we'll talk about that all the time. A, attitude. I want guys to be energy givers. I don't want people to be energy vampires. I want people to bring energy to our program that are associated with it. Our staff will, and our players will as well. T, toughness. The ability to embrace adversity on and off the field. The game of baseball, as you guys know, is a game of failure. It's tough. Life's tough. And we're going to teach these guys how to embrace that and move forward. And they'll uh, do that in a positive manner. Uh, e, excellence. Being at your best every day but not only on the baseball field, but in the classroom. If you're a 3-5 student, be a 3-5 student. If you're a 275 student, be a 275 student. And then in the community, Greenville is a baseball community. We've got to get our guys out there. We've got to read to elementary schools. We've got to help with uh, underprivileged kids. We've got to do all that stuff because if we do that, they'll have more confidence and they'll play better on the baseball field. And then one of the most important ones, S, selfless, we over me. It takes 35 guys in Division I baseball to compete for a national championship. Obviously, everyone has a different role. I want our guys to execute those roles, not accept them. If you're a pinch hitter, execute it to the best of your ability, but don't accept it because we need you to want to be a starter. But you have to do it in a positive way, and we're going to play for the East Carolina Pirates on the front of our uniform, not the name on the back of our uniform. From a recruiting standpoint, I've had you know the opportunity to – Coach all over the country, make connections everywhere, and uh, recruiting is the uh, lifeline to any program, but especially East Carolina baseball. It's going to start in Greenville. It's going to start in Pitt County. It's going to stay in the eastern North Carolina part of the state, and then it's going to expand through North Carolina and then up and down the eastern seaboard. The coaching staff that I'll put together and myself, nobody will outwork us on the recruiting trail. I can promise you they won't do that, and we'll do it. And we'll do it the right way. We're going to bring in kids who – want to win at the highest level, who are very talented, but have the same values that I just talked about, the lifestyle with the Pirates. And uh, there'll, there'll be no room for you know, somebody not to be a good student. You've got to go to study hall. You've got to make, make your tutors. You've got to do all those things because it's a complete package here. Uh, had a chance to meet with the current team um, yesterday. About eight guys are on campus, and it's great to start reaching out to those guys. You know, my first two priorities are, are to reach out to all the guys on the roster, embrace them. They're part of the East Carolina family. I didn't recruit them, but they're going to be part of our program. And we're going to embrace what I just talked about and bring them in, love them, tell them how much we care, but we're going to work them hard as well. So we've got to do that um, from that standpoint. And uh, lastly, it's just, uh, it's like I said, it's a surreal moment for me to be the leader of East Carolina baseball. But the thing is, uh, I know i got great support here. I'm going to hire a great staff. Uh, we're going to compete at the highest level. You know, will it happen tomorrow? Uh, no, because we're not playing tomorrow, but it'll happen soon um, from that standpoint. But uh, the, my teammates that I played with and all the East Carolina baseball alum that have ever played here, we're going to put a, a product on the field and off the field that they're very happy for. I can promise you that they'll look up. It'll be exciting times at Clark LeClaire Stadium. The jungle's going to be packed again. We're going to be competing the host regionals, competing the host super regionals. And we're going to go to Omaha, and uh, we're going to do that someday. So I appreciate your time, and thanks for coming. Well, the, the first thing, like I stated, is I've had an opportunity to work with some of the best head coaches in the country, if not the best. And uh, they gave me a lot of autonomy in my job. You know, I've been associate head coach. I've pretty much been the head coach of the offense. I know pitching because I was a catcher. So uh, I feel like I'm very prepared from the resources I've had throughout my career. But playing – Playing in East Carolina and being so close to getting to Omaha and then getting there as a coach, I think that's probably prepared me more than anything. It's vital. You know, uh, the number one thing is I'm going to have a couple staff members or potential candidates on campus in the next few days. Um, but me personally reaching out to all the guys that are on our team, all the committed guys, talking to them, 
tell them the direction the program's going, it's very vital because it is crucial time in recruiting. That even a uh, country boy from Snow Hill can make it to be the head coach of East Carolina. Uh, you know, it, a lot of people joke, said, yeah, you've come a long way since Snow Hill. And uh, it, uh, it's a great community to grow up in. Green Central was awesome. Um, I had a lot of experiences there that have uh, put me in the position I am here today. Um, not to sound too arrogant, but we're going to compete nationally. We're going to compete against anybody. And uh, back when I played here, we beat everybody. So that's what we plan on doing.